Hey everyone, Martin here at Orange Box Photography and welcome to the channel. So today I wanted to do an unboxing video for my new Nikko 50mm uh, AFS and G lens. Basically this is bought to replace my older AFD lens now which is it's getting a little tired uh, and the focus motor on that's a little bit noisy and the, the price of the, the 50mm 1.4 has come down quite a bit so I thought why not get it upgraded uh, and get the addition of the silent wave motors. So this lens itself um, will work on any DX or FX camera for those out there interested and um, because it's a G lens which means it's gelded it has an inbuilt focus motor so you don't need a camera with a focus motor in it. So this will work on your G3100s, D60s and um, pretty much all of the Nikon cameras it's going to work on. So what we're going to do is we're going to get on, get it unboxed and take a little look and then I'll also have some sample images at the end just to show you what uh, it's like at the various apertures. Right, so here we go, let's get this uh, 50mm unboxed and then I can go away and have a little play and get some test shots uh, which will be following on from the unboxing and uh, through the magic of time warp. So if we get into uh, the box here, um, obviously it comes in the usual Nikon gold box which uh, is a lovely box uh, as far as boxes go. So first things first, um, get the pouch. Uh, I don't really use these in fairness, it'll go back in the box when it's done. Um, it's not padded, so it's not going to offer much protection other than to stop your lens from being scratched. Um, I don't know really anybody that uses them. If you use them, let me know. Do you, do you use it? Do you find it any use? Um, so the next thing in here is we've got uh, the warranty card stuff. Um, so warranty card and uh, instruction manual. Uh, again, not a fan of instructions, although in, in all fairness, uh, I don't know of anybody who, who reads instruction manuals for lenses. And lenses are usually pretty self-explanatory. Um, but they're there for those people that uh, do need the instructions. So let's get into uh, the important bit, which is uh, the lens itself. So we just take this and stick this off to the side. So obviously, uh, Nikon's changed the, the egg cartons again. And they used to use paper, um, but they seem to have gone to this plastic. I don't know what the reason why is. I would thought paper is more recyclable than plastic. But, you know, it is uh, a plastic egg carton. So if we just get in here. Right, so, uh, basically it comes with a hood, uh, now this didn't come with uh, the previous um, EFD lens, in fact you had to buy a hood separately, and in fairness it was a rubber, um, which wasn't the greatest in the world if I'm honest, um, but this does come with the HB47 hood, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, um, pretty handy, um, handy to have that on, especially in uh, brightly lit situations, help keep your pictures contrasty and stop straight light getting in as well. But the important bit is the lens. So we get rid of the egg carton, uh, useful for Easter eggs or something, I'd imagine. So let's get in here and have a little look. Right, so there we have it. And um, this is the, the Nikkor 50mm uh, 1.4 EFS lens. Uh, obviously this is a G lens, which means it's gelded, which means that it's going to autofocus on every Nikon camera that there is. Um, so you don't have to worry about it because this one's got a built-in focus motor. Um, obviously it is a silent wave motor which is the reason I'm upgrading to this lens um, which means you're going to get nice quiet autofocus unlike the EFD which was quite clunky and loud. Um, so obviously you get your distance scale over here which I'll just bring it up to the camera a little bit. Um, comes with uh, the usual sort of switches you get on the side here so you've got manual A which is obviously for full auto or you can just manually override with the uh, focusing ring or just full on manual as well if you need that um, which to be fair I would use that if I was doing a video or something like that obviously this lens is weather sealed and um, so you can take it out in the elements and uh, we'll just show you the, the rear element here and um, so the rear element it does have a little gasket around the back um, just to weather seal it against your camera's body which is a must and obviously there's uh, your rear element there. Uh, in fact, we'll show you the, the elements here. Um, right, so obviously, yeah, nice wide piece of glass there. Uh, you see straight through there, so that's going to let in lots of light, uh, which is going to be, yeah, really nice in low light conditions. So there it is, the Nikko 50mm. 1.4 G lens, um, phenomenal lens. I'm um, looking forward to getting some test shots with this to see what it is. 
as I say, there's going to be some test shots of this coming up in a sec, so you can have a look at it as well. Um, but um, nope, EFD's gone, this is now going to take its place. So I'm looking forward to using that. So stay tuned because uh, we've got some test shots coming up to so see you can see what uh, this lens can actually do. Right, so let's take a look at some of the sample images. I have to say thank you to my model for today, which was my younger brother who popped by and unwittingly became uh, the star of this particular video. Um, so basically, these uh, all these images we're about to go through all shot on my Nikon D800. Uh, obviously running through f-stops of 1.4 to f11. Uh, didn't see the point of going beyond f11. Um, you know, it just, for some cameras, it gets a bit uh, more depth of field by then. Uh, unfortunately, the D800 does suffer from diffraction after 11. Um, distance to subject with this probably around about 20 to 30 centimeters. So even at f11, you know, you still got a little bit of uh, the background blown out a little bit. Um, but that's just because obviously distance to subject. Um, obviously, distance uh, does affect your depth of field. But that's for a whole nother video. So basically, yeah, on here you can see this is uh, shot at ISO 800. In fact, all of them were shot at ISO 800. Uh, on the D800, 50mm, 1.4. Um, very, very nice shallow depth of field. And um, really sort of separating the subject from the background. Um, you know, that background is so creamy. It's almost buttery. Um, you know, so great, great uh, bokeh. Um, now, basically, yeah, by f2.8... Um, this is when the lens is at its super sharpest. Uh, f2 to f11 is kind of the, the sharper point of this lens. Um, it does suffer a little bit from big netting uh, at 1, 4 and 2, 8. Although these can easily be removed with Lightroom or Photoshop. So it's not very difficult to remove anyway. Um, but very, very punchy images. Um, next one shot at f4. Obviously still getting a, a reasonably nice shallow depth of field here. The background still nicely blown out. And so it's not distracting you, still separating uh, you know, your subject from the background. Uh, next shot, shot at 5.6. Um, fantastic sort of uh, punchy image here. Um, really, really clear. Um, background starting to come into a little bit of focus now, which it always would, but uh, 5.6. Uh, next image, shot at f8. Um, you can see for yourself, does a fantastic job at f8. And then moving on, we've got it at f11. Obviously, didn't bother going anything beyond f11. I didn't see the point. And also, as I say, the D800 suffers from diffraction after f11, so the images tend to start getting a little bit soft after that anyway. So there we have it, the, my brief review on the Nikko 50mm 1.4G lens. And um, this lens is definitely something worth considering. As you can see from the images, it, you know, it's super sharp, especially once you get to f2 where it gets its sharpest. Uh, all the way through to f8, this lens is phenomenal, as it was with the EFD, I mean there's not much between this and the EFD, and I say the only reason I've upgraded is, is purely before the focus mode, um, you know this one has a silent wave one, so it's a lot quieter than the old EFD lens, um, you know this is a lens that every photographer should have in the bag, and to be fair a lot do, um, so if you're considering buying one of these, um, definitely worth it, the, there is another one which obviously is the 1.8, which is kind of two thirds of a stop, and darker as far as the aperture goes um, but it is a phenomenal lens in itself so if you're on a budget you know as I said this this cost me about 350 ish pounds um, and there is the 1.8 as well um, which is on you know coming up just about 250 pounds so it's a hundred pounds cheaper um, but the 1.8 G is almost as good as quality is very very comparable so if you're on a budget then consider the 1.8 as an alternative um, you know the, the quality difference between the two is very very minimal the only reason really to get uh, the 1.4 is if you need that extra two-thirds of a stop in light and um, which for me I need because you know if I'm shooting in a, a dark lit situation say you know I was doing uh, a wedding shoot in a church uh, I need all the light that I can gather so for me 1.4 it has to be um, but if it's not critical then the 1.8 is definitely definitely worth considering um, but uh, that's my review uh, for now. Um, any questions you guys have, feel free to post a comment below and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Plenty more videos to come. Um, but that's it for now, guys. You guys take care. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.